You have your own requests, but what do you bring to the table? Um, I bring a lot, actually. I'm I don't a know. hypocrite. How so? In front Is yours private? No. Wait, but, but. <laughs> but his job I know, so, yeah. I, I, know I, lo I love the fact that you guys are laughing like you made a point, but guys and girls are, are different. Do you think body count doesn't matter? Absolutely not. It does not matter at all. You need both. You, why do you need promiscuity? Because you need something of everything. Times are it? changing. It's going in a really bad direction. Like the, the native population of Holland in 100, 200 years will be replaced by Muslims. And why is that a problem? The Dutch people aren't going to exist anymore. Doesn't that, doesn't that concern you at all? No, there's a lot of countries who won't exist anymore in yeah. thousands of years. Going around the table on this, uh, do you think, so okay, essentially the boyfriend didn't like her going out, didn't like how she dressed when she was going out, uh, or even in general too? Like didn't like how you dressed maybe going to school or stuff like that? Or No, I don't think it was that It was deep. just when you were going out? Yeah. Okay. So didn't like her going out, didn't like how she dressed when she was going out, and then also didn't like some of the TikToks she posts. What do you guys think? Is this, uh, is this him just having boundaries, or is this controlling and insecure, starting with you? Um, I think he's definitely insecure and maybe jealous that you get more attention than him. <laughs> Agreed. OK, insecure that he's, she's getting more attention than him. Yeah. OK, what do you think? Um... Yeah, I, th I think it sounds like a really bad relationship where you cannot be yourself. So I think it's it's not good on his side, or for both of you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, girl, thank God you got out, because that <laughs> could have gone far south. Like, I don't mm. think it's, it's normal to tell people what to do, and if you don't like what they're doing, then just don't be with them, you know? Wait, it could have gone a lot worse. Hell yeah. Was he abusive? No. So they were dating for three years, and it didn't go far worse. He just had boundaries. Been there. Oh, so it would have manifested, Seen that. Would have manifested in year four? Is that what you're saying? Um, I think it gets worse and worse. Like you say, as soon as the honeymoon stage is over, they try to Honey, grab... They, they were dating for three years. Yeah, but what, that's what how she called that, it. Wait, how long does that's the honeymoon... honeymoon phase. That's like three said, months, six maybe. Six months, right? What? <laughs> like the first year and a half. It needed for a year. year. Anyways, Shit. once that is over, I think these yeah. types of people, they will try to grab control. What do you mean these types of people, though? What's, what's wrong with not wanting What do you mean these people? To, to these people as in... What you mean, you people? <laughs> people who don't agree on what you are doing and want to control instead of stepping away. Okay. Would you prefer a man who has no boundaries or some boundaries? This is not nothing to do with boundaries, I think. If but it's the not question was, would you prefer a man who has no boundaries or some boundaries? As in a relationship, for me personally, or? Yep. Depends what kind of boundaries, I guess. So no boundaries or some boundaries? I think boundaries. I don't know. I don't okay. know. Do well, you have an example? What kind of boundaries would be acceptable? Um, well, you're a partner for life, right? So then you have to talk about, okay, I do this. Do you agree on that? Can you live with that? And the other way around as well. Okay. Well, so you're painting this guy as somebody, I don't know the guy, but you're painting him as somebody who could potentially be some sort of dan danger to her when he's simply yeah. asking her not to do TikToks, which are unnecessary. You don't need to be doing TikToks. It's not an important thing. Yeah, but it's not why, for why, her. Why, why wouldn't you just try and find middle ground? Yeah, you have to find middle ground. But, but you're, if say, you but can't, you're saying that that she was good to get out of the relationship and that he could have been dangerous. That, that seems like bad advice. The, I think the good advice would be maybe to have the conversation with the guy and think, what, maybe put yourself in his shoes and think, why doesn't he like me doing Sorry, this Sorry, but TikTok? you should not be with someone who calls you a bitch. That's just so disrespectful, at least. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the TikToks for now. So don't, don't you think that it would be better to have the conversation and yeah, put you yourself in his shoes? You shouldn't have a conversation with someone who calls you a bitch. But we're talking about TikTok specifically now. Yeah. Put the bitch aside. Put the bitch stuff aside. <laughs> just, just on TikTok <laughs> now. So if, if the, the TikTok stuff to me seems so unimportant that if, if you tell your girlfriend, hey, listen, you're, I can kind of see your titties on the TikTok and you're mumbling all of these sexual songs, there's no real need to be doing it, I would expect her to say, yeah, good idea. Don't you think that's fair enough? You would enough? expect her? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't agree. Just quickly, guys, if you have not liked the video and if you're enjoying it, if you're getting value, don't forget to smash that thumbs up just below. And also, if you aren't subscribed to the channel and if you would like to be, then you are more than welcome to do so. Back to it. Question for you, because you mentioned controlling. Mm -hmm. uh, would you 
Your longest relationship was six years, you said? Yeah. Uh, let's just, like, future boyfriend or whatever, would you have an issue if he was paying for another girl's OnlyFans? <clears throat> That's a good question. Never thought about that. I don't think I mind, no. You wouldn't mind? No. Like, as long as I like, don't meet up. He was, like, messaging? No, he's just, like, chatting with yeah, her. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, you really? Yeah. Okay. But well, you asked the wrong person. Like I'm super open about that kind of stuff. Do you, so. Are you Polly? No. Are do you have open relationships? No. Have you ever? Had I've an had open in the past, yeah. How open was the open relationship? As open as it can get, I guess. Uh, who were you monogamous first? Like, did it start monogamous, then you opened it up, yeah. or was it always open? Yeah. The other one who opened it up? No, together. Wait, you we mutual? Talk, someone, someone's yeah, gonna come up with Yeah, we talked about it, and I was like, ah, maybe that's a well, good well, okay. idea Who, to try. You, you talked about it. Who started the condo? He did. Okay, <laughs> all right. And then you were like, hell yeah. No, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, well, I never tried. Maybe it's fun. And you were fun. getting with other guys? Yeah. Was this your six-year relationship? No, that was just something like uh, in between. How long was that relationship? Oh, like one and a half years. So I. I, really, I don't really count so it. While you were seeing him, how many other guys did you see? I don't know. I don't take count of that. Like 10, 20? I don't know. Maybe, maybe 10? I don't know. I think so. Okay. How many girls did he see? Um, like, would you guys well, be, talk about it, kind of? No, no, we wouldn't really talk about it. Um, but I did know uh, two girls that he was with. Mm -hmm. um, so I do know of two, but I think mm -hmm. it's more probably around five. So you, so you put in more work than he did? More work? More work. I guess that's an American saying. Um, you, you got with more guys than he got with girls. Yeah. So let's just say it would be like five and ten. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wouldn't like that he's uh, perhaps getting like, I don't know, the whole personal thing. I guess my boyfriend, if he wants, can watch porn or something, but not not the personal chatting, I guess. And the strip club, I would find a bit of waste of money. But if he would do it once a year, then and he really no, wants every that. No, every once a week. Every, that's a waste of money. No, he's just going to get some food. But don't you have to pay entrance, or is it yeah, free sometime, to walk in? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it's free. It's a good wing. I've never been in a strip club. I don't know how it works. I've only been once, but sometimes, I mean, there wasn't food at the one that I went to. But <laughs> I don't know. They're terrible. But yeah, I, 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 I guess. I, and then just to be polite, like he'll give like 10 bucks to like the one girl or something. But he goes for the food at, to the strip club. If he club. wants to eat there one, one time, sure. But every week, then maybe... It's his, favorite place to, it's his favorite place to eat. But he, he does look at the girls a little bit, but he's there for the food. <laughs> That's reasonable, right? I, I have a boyfriend. I'm now imagining him doing that, actually, and it's just very adorable. But you don't mind uh, your yeah. boyfriend watching porn? I, I, I guess not. Like, now I'm, like, but a if, week but away. But if, if you're in the, in the next room and he's watching porn, isn't that a bit gay? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean if I'm in the next room? Why if you're it? in the next room and he's in there playing with himself, isn't that a bit gay? Gay? Yeah. Well, you think watching porn is gay? No, but he, but he can go and have sex with you. But I said, like, right now, I'm a week away, so maybe he does that when he's home. Like, well, I don't know. What if it becomes a habit and then he's doing it in, in, the, in the basement? Isn't that gay? Well, I live in an apartment. <laughs> I don't have a basement. But uh, gay? Yeah, it's gay. He's playing with himself. <laughs> I'm sorry. You he could go upstairs and have sex with a woman, but he's playing with himself in the next room. Isn't that a bit gay? I think this is very funny. I really assume you're making a joke. No, I'm dead serious. I'm 100% serious. It's gay, it's gay to play with yourself? Well, if you, well, then, not necessarily maybe it's in good general, if but I think that if, if you have gay. a girlfriend <laughs> and you can have a, 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 an active sex life with your girlfriend, but you're off playing with yourself, it's a bit gay. <laughs> Saying that in like homophobic way, I mean not homophobic, I, homosexual way, or like a derogatory term way. Well, it's kind <laughs> of a it's it, both a little bit of somewhere in between. Okay. Because you're playing with yourself when you could be playing with your girlfriend. But what if I'm working? What do you mean? Like uh, no, what, my, what my situation is if, if, is if you're there. No. Why would he then play with himself? Then? Well, I mean, I'm if you there. allow it while while you're away, what if it becomes a habit and he prefers it? 
Isn't that concerning? That would be very sad if he prefers playing with himself instead of playing with me. But you allowed it, so you sort of you sort of let it in the door. I I think you're jumping very big steps here. Yeah. Big but steps. Yeah. If, you, if, if you're cool with him watching porn, then like, what's the difference between him doing it when you're there and you're away? He's still getting off to other women. I think if he rather watches porn and and plays with himself instead of going with me, then maybe our relationship is really breaking down. Like, I don't know. That shouldn't be good. But if he's watching porn when you're not there, it's... I don't know. Why doesn't he just have it use the bank, you know? Maybe he does use the bank. But you're okay with him watching porn in a relationship? I mean, hypothetically, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Unless he, like, stalks well, this I've ne- girl, never dated a Dutch girl, but it seems same. like you guys have not many boundaries. You don't think I have boundaries? Well, I mean, what, like, what actively allowing your, your man to watch porn or, or being okay with it, I think that's strange. And then also being in the open relationship over here, and it just seems like there's a lack of boundaries. We're Our complete difference. opposites, I think. I mean, uh, there's a lot of things that are normal in our culture, in our country, that are really not done here, but... I, th- I guess it's kind of what you grow up with, and I'm fine with that. So, and you're not, and that's also fine. Or, well, you said you're very picky and you have high standards, right? We should get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't you tell us about the kind of guy that you want? Okay, well. So let's start looks. Okay. So how tall are you? Five ten. Okay, five ten. So you're. Uh, Pretty high up there? Yeah, and I like to wear heels too, so. Okay, so uh, bare minimum height for a guy uh, for you to date? Probably 6'2 or 6'3. Okay, so you've already so reduced. That's already like a really small percent of yeah. the population. Yeah, so 6'3, that's 1%, I believe. of yeah. or, wait, Is it 3%, 1%? Uh, Jake, do you know the percentage on this? I'm not sure. I know that uh, I think 6 foot and above is 15%. I think 5'8 is the average. So. Yeah, I'm definitely taller than the average man. Yeah, so. you are. Or, well, I think the average is 5'9 or 5'10 in the U.S. anyways. But yeah. in Holland, it's a bit... So that's why I have higher the standards. It's higher, but, uh, so minimum 6'2, 6'3. Yeah. Okay, so that's already 1% of men, I believe. Um, maybe 6'2 is like 3% of men. Can somebody, can you find the statistics, Austin? Uh, what about other physical traits? So uh, will you date any race? Yeah. Okay. I'm open. Uh, can, will you date a obese guy? No, because that just shows that they don't take care of their mm-hmm. so, themselves. And sure. And then uh, age? What's the age range that you'll date? Um, I'm 27, so probably like 29 to 42. <laughs> okay, that's pretty pretty reasonable. Uh, that's a wide range. Uh, look, we should do the calculator too. Austin, can you pull up the oh my calculator? Gosh, it's probably so low. <laughs> Um, have you done this before? No, but my friends always tell me that my dating pool is like 1%. Mm. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, well, what's the percentage of men over 6'3? Let me pull up. What's the height? Per- maybe the, cha- the chat probably knows. What's the height percentile? Okay, so uh, 3%, so 4%, 6'2, 3%, 6'3, 1%, 1% over 6'4. Oh, okay, I was close oh, enough. Oh, okay, I have a. Four percent. So four percent over six two. Um, okay. All right, th- How good. much That's is six two in centimeters? About one hundred and ninety um, or so. Okay. One hundred eighty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's also pull up the calculator. What's we should. The, what's the, uh, oh, it should be one of the tabs. Okay. If you look at one of the tabs up there, it's calculator. All right, we're gonna go through the calculator. By the way, guys, like the video. All right, so. Uh, age, I think you said... 29 to 43. Oh, 43, okay. Uh, race? Any. Exclude married, I'm assuming? Oh, yeah, definitely not married. Yeah. <laughs> Minimum height, you said let's do 6'2 or 6'3? Six 6'3. Six oh, okay. <laughs> Exclude obese? Yes. And then minimum income? Uh, 100,000. 100,000. Well, you make way more as a nurse. Wait. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Uh, scroll down. Ideal man, <laughs> zero, <laughs> zero point <Wow>. eleven. <laughs> that's really bad. Percent. Delusion score four out Delusion. of five. Cat Why isn't it you. five out of five? That should be. It should be more. Oh my yeah. gosh! So what do I need to like settle on? Perhaps, height? perhaps height. <laughs> height would be a good one. Okay, uh, I can go down like an inch. 
<laughs> I still haven't gotten closure on this um, 0.11 situation. <laughs> oh, I'm sad now. I have right. no hope. <laughs> um, so, you know, you have your own requests, but what do you bring to the table? Um, I bring a lot, actually. Um, I feel like I have a good job. I give back to other people. I'm super kind. I'm willing to give my all to be in a relationship if they give that back to me. So you're a nice person. What else? Mm -hmm. um, I'm athletic. I like to travel. Red flag. <laughs> what? <laughs> a lot you're of from money? Where, Australia? Australia. Okay, you're traveling right now. I That's know, but flag. I'm a guy, so it's very different. <laughs> Women like okay. worldly men. And guys don't like when girls can travel too? No. You don't want a travel buddy? Uh, I want to show her the world. Okay. I don't want her have to have already been around the world. That's not cool. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Wait, you said... Um, when you In response to Jake's question, you said... Uh, I, did you say you bring your career to the table? No. Or was it your... There yet. No. But I, I, thought, I thought you said, I said like, I, I have a good a, job or something. I mean, I have a job where, like, I give myself to other people all day, helping Sexually? take care of them. No. <laughs> oh, sorry. So I'm a nurse. nurse. I'm a nurse. Travel nurse, remember? No, I know, but give, you give yourself to... Yeah, your, like... I always thought that was like... There's a, a lot of crazy stuff that we do and see in a day. Is that a good thing for a relationship or a bad thing? No, it's a good thing because then you know that I'll take care of you when we get old and about to die. I'll, I'll take care of you till death. So what, what, what do you think a guy like that who's six foot three and athletic and earning really good money, what do you think he'd be looking for? Me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> hopefully. You don't know? No, hopefully me. Have you investigated maybe what that sort of guy I might just want to be myself and the right person will come. I know what you want, but what do you think he wants? Someone who's loyal, faithful, trustworthy, which I am. Do you think he, is there anything else that he might want? I don't know. You tell me. Well, it's kind of interesting because... Someone that to, to, trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if I was going to say that I want this very, very rare commodity that's actually very hard to attain and then, and then really hard to keep after that, I'd want to have a game plan about how to get there. And I'd want to understand how exactly to get that. So do you think that, um, you know, you're kind of winging it here and it doesn't seem very likely? No, it's definitely possible. Do you think you might want uh, someone who's younger? Maybe. Maybe I want someone who's older. And more yeah. mature. Yeah, you've said that. <laughs> yeah, but do you think that as you get towards 30, you become less fertile? A guy like that might mm. want lots of children. Yeah, yeah, then he girl. should definitely date someone younger. Yeah, so has it occurred to you that you have to lower your standards? Yeah, it has. Yeah. And I'm still you, delusional, apparently, is what they said. I'd say so. Um, <laughs> if you were to lower million. your standards, what are some of the areas in which you would lower your standards? Would it be height? Would it be athleticism, money, age? Um, maybe, like, how well in shape they are. So or you, height how much they make it just depends on the person yeah conceivably what what kind of guy could you see yourself going for a guy who's five foot ten earns 80k a year a little bit out of shape no because that's taking something out of each different category but uh what do you think you're above that better than that like you you shouldn't have to i mean yeah my height wise i'm taller than someone that's five eight but in terms of like your the overall we're talking about the overall sort of um everything together do you think that you're above above that? A guy yeah. who's five foot ten, earning eighty k a year. Yeah, because I make more than shape. them. I'm taller than them, and I'm in better shape than them. Do you think guy cares how much you make? No, not at all. So why why does it matter? But no, it doesn't matter. But for girls, it does because we have to think about our future and like if I know, I'm going to have we're, we're well aware babies, of what you want, but we're talking about what the guy wants. Yeah, they want someone. They don't so care about money. If he doesn't care about money, then it's not really going to occur to him. So right. It's not really going to factor. But in. for me. It makes a difference because, like, if I'm having okay. children or someone, they <laughs> Back to have you. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's my life and it's my. Yeah, I know, but, I'm, but, but, I'm but what, we're, what we're talking about here is what the, we're trying to put ourselves in the guy's shoes, see what he might want. Okay, so should I quit my job? No, not quit your job, but I'd say drastically lower your standards. Okay. Yeah, but unfortunately, when you've been around and it's I'll like try. ten years and you're, you're 27 and you've and you've dated all these different guys, you've got all these expectations because you would have dated a guy who's six two, dated a guy who earns over 100k, you would have dated all these different guys, and now you'll be disappointed when a guy doesn't have any of those characteristics. Yeah, that's true. Does that I concern you? I still have a few more years left in me. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, okay. What about you? What about Let's me? put you in the hot seat. Go for it. What are you looking for? I'd say I'm looking for a woman who's interesting and who's cute, attractive, someone who's humble, 
someone who isn't out here trying to put themselves all over Instagram and trying to get all of this male validation, somebody who's religious, God-fearing, and somebody who genuinely wants to be a mother and wants to be a wife, mm -hmm. and that's her life ambition. And what do you bring to the table? Well, I've got a very good career going on. I think I'm decently attractive. Lots going on. What's your Instagram look like? What do you mean? <laughs> well, you say girls can't have Instagrams. What well, do you think, that it's equal? It, it should be. Well, it's not. <laughs> okay. Can we see your, your Instagram? Go for it. <laughs> I don't really post too much, but... Uh, How many followers do you have on Instagram? Like eight. Thousand, I think maybe. Oh, less that's a red know. flag. Why? <laughs> that's too much or too little? <clears throat> too, too much. much. <laughs> too much. Too much. You're I don't a hypocrite. Know. How so? You don't want a girl to have Instagram at all. I uh, no, I don't mind if she has Instagram, but it has to be on private, just family and friends. Is yours private? No. Wait, but, but. <laughs> his job. Wait, I know. So, yeah. I, I know. I, lo I love the fact that you guys are laughing, like you made a point. But guys, <laughs> guys, 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 guys and girls are, are different. And first of all, I'm a content creator. I'm a YouTuber for for a living. And girl, guys, girls don't really care about that. I've never had a girl say, "Oh, your Instagram's a little bit too public." It would just never occur. Mm. Yeah, and I also don't want her to be a provider. I don't want her to be a protector. I don't want her to have to jump in front when there's a robber. I don't want any of these things, and I would and I would never expect that. That's the guy's job, and then women have a certain job as well, to be maternal, loving, peaceful, to be a mother, these sorts of things, and, and to recognise that. So, the fact that I am not maternal doesn't make me a hypocrite, because I'm not going to be a mother. Do you do you want a guy to pay for a first date? Yeah. Would you date a guy who wants you to pay for the first date? Um, I would probably pay for dinner and then never see him again. Well, that makes you a hypocrite. No, because how am I going to know if he's going to pay or Right, but so you, you want a trait in a partner that you yourself are not willing to accept in a partner. Similarly, Jake here, he might have some quarrel or uh, objection to a woman who has a public-facing Instagram that posts certain types of photos. But he doesn't have, like, he's not going to take his Instagram down. It's not clear to me if that makes him a hypocrite necessarily. Any more than it makes you a hypocrite for wanting a guy to pay for a first date, but you would never be willing to pay for a first date. No, I have, but then I wouldn't see them again. Well, so, sure. So does that make you a hypocrite? No. Why not? Because that's setting my boundaries. Okay, so you say so that. So you they cross the boundary. Are you saying that and guys I'm not and accept that. The, the guys and girls have different roles in that situation when it comes to a first date? Yeah, because they're different like, expectations. Like the man wants to be a provider. Ah, here we go. He's not being a provider. He's okay. not providing the first. So date. then it doesn't make versus. doesn't make you a hypocrite having ha having different standards. Take the L. Okay. All right. <laughs> But okay. so you, you said that it's it's okay for a woman to want a provider, right? Yeah. But so, and would you consider that traditional gender role? Mm -hmm. So like a man being a provider, that's a traditional man. And a man who wants 50-50, who wants to split the bill, that's a modern man, right? Mm -hmm. Well, is a modern woman, a woman who posts revealing immodest photos on Instagram? She's got to pay half the bill, yeah. Well, well, hold on. I'm not really getting there. But so is... A woman traditional if she's posting revealing and I'm not saying it's wrong I'm just asking is a woman traditional if she posts revealing photos on Instagram probably not do you think a component of being a traditional woman is modesty yeah okay <clears throat> Checkmate, I guess. I don't no. Know. Yeah, I think you just keep agreeing to what we're saying and then could not quite sort I, of conceding. <laughs> no, I, yeah. Yeah, you should be a little modest, but you can still. But if you if you want a guy who's got all these pictures. different things going on, you're talking about a top, top, top tier guy who's going to be able to fulfill all of his masculine duties. So then, shouldn't you be fulfilling all of your feminine duties? Yeah. I still got to pay rent. No, you won't. If, if you've right got a guy now. who's earning upwards of 100k a year. But, I mean, guys, my dating pool's so small, so I'm just living <laughs> in Delulu land. <laughs> I gotta you do certainly live in Delulu land, that's for sure. I gotta provide for myself sure. until I can yeah. find that person. It sounds like I'll be working a while. Well, yep. Yeah. Keep at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why do you guys look into it so much, though? It's kind of well, funny. It's, it's, it's I actually feel a, like you're making drama about it, Rizlan. I feel like you're looking into it way more than you should. It kind of sounds like, oh, she did this, so that means probably this, so that means this, so I feel this. So it's kind of yeah, well, like men, it's are, men are more logical when we when we think about these sorts of things. And past promiscuity is a, an indicator for for divorce. 
They've done studies on this and they show that as a woman's body count goes up, five, ten, they become exponentially more likely to, to end a marriage. So what about men? Men can be promiscuous? It's, it, it affects them less, definitely. <laughs> so what's like an average number for a guy to have? Like five to eight. I think that's about Five average. to eight is low. That's <laughs> not really promiscuous. Low. Yeah, I know. But oh, a lot, over your whole life. But a lot, a lot of guys, that's, that's where they sit. Yeah. But like five to eight. You asked what the average is. is that's about the average. Yeah. Like legit, that's a fact. Well, most like you'd be surprised to know that most guys are out there at the moment get zero sexual attention. Yeah, a lot of guys in their in their twenties even have been celibate for a whole year. A big percentage of people. So that would I'm be just, about the average. I'm just really curious, and I want to ask like all the girls here. It's like the mindset that you guys have. Is that normal here, or is that like? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like okay. in America. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just wanted to know that. Because yeah. it seems so, f like you said, like you think we're brainwashed, but it's funny because I think we think the same thing about you guys. Well, and I mean, then you're just, from Australia. Yeah. And you kind Australia, of it's this. pretty bad too, yeah. in terms of like the liberal sort of mindset, happy wife, happy life type stuff. But uh, you just have to look at the fruits of it. And I think that there is an objective truth about this. It's that people who have lower body counts going into marriage are much more likely to have a long and successful marriage. It's just fascinating that that's part. so important. Well, do you think it's important when you're going into spending the rest of your life with somebody and having them mother your children that you should be looking into these things? Absolutely not, no. I don't mind what if, if my guy is slept with 10 or 1,000 I'm, I'm speaking women. more as a, as, as a, as a guy looking into the, the past of a woman? I've never been asked about body count or anything like that, so it's, it's just very <coughs> fascinating to hear that side of things. Well, um, like I said before, you can actually look at the fruits of it, and you can, and you can, this is actually borne out by stats as well to show that women who have a higher body count are much more likely to get divorced. And so they make for bad, they don't, they make for bad partners. So guys need to be looking into this stuff. If you want to have a logical analysis of the person that you're about to spend your life with. Sleeping with people does not make you any type of uh, worse rel relationship you, erroneous. material. Erroneous! Do you think that if you, sleep, erroneous. if you sleep with a thousand people in a year, that makes you a worse partner? That, I think it actually says nothing about you, except that your libido might be quite high, otherwise yeah, right. you wouldn't be. I'd say that, that would make you a total whore if you sleep with a thousand people in a year. And it says a lot about your character, it says a lot about how you value yourself, and it would say a lot about what kind of a partner you'd, you'd be as well, what kind of a wife you'd be, okay. and how you value sex. Because sex is actually important. It's not just something that we, we can do and just never think about again. Yeah, but again, it's so human, it's so natural, so I don't see why it would matter. You think matter. it's natural to have sex with lots of different people? Oh yeah, that's where we come from, so hmm. yeah. Wait, so do you, do you think body count doesn't matter? Absolutely not. It does not matter at all. What's your body count? I don't know. I knew you were going to ask this question. I thought about it, but I have no idea. I never counted Well, I don't need, like, an exact 53. I don't need an exact number. Give us a range. I don't know. I'd say 50, if I have to guess. More than 100? No, I don't think so. But it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Well, well, you, at don't, least to you, me. Don't, well you don't care about body count. Right? Yeah, I don't. You don't care about the man who slept with... I prefer I actually a do man think, who I, has I think more. a lot of women, like, if they knew that the man slept with, like, 10,000 women, they'd maybe get a bit of an <laughs> ick. No, I prefer a guy who slept with m more women because then they know what they're doing and they're experienced, so I actually prefer that. Are they? Are they more experienced? Or what is your question? Well, I don't know. I don't get this whole, like... You need to sleep with a lot of people to either become good at sex or get experienced at, at sex. Yeah. You can actually make the argument it's that a woman, a woman who's had, for example, 20 one-night stands, and that's it, versus a woman who's had one or two boyfriends and has had slept with them dozens or hundreds of times. Yeah. Everybody is different, She's though. probably going to be better in bed than the woman who's had 20, 30, 40, 50 one-night stands. I actually, I that's actually, not true. <laughs> it's not true? No, it's not true. But Everybody is different, and also the communication style is different. Some people have fetishes, right. some Every, people but don't. But I could just use that same argument. You said everybody's different. You're right. So the woman who's had one boyfriend who's had sex, sex with him a ton, she is different. She's going to be better in bed than the girl who slept with 20 men one time each. 
I think it depends what you mean by better in bed, though. I don't think that girls who are really promiscuous are good in bed. I find that, the ex- that, that they're actually a lot worse. It depends what you, what you want by sex. And, and it's kind of unattractive when a, when a girl's really promiscuous and she's just there to get her rocks off. And it doesn't really mean anything to her. It's, it's not this sort of this important thing. Because if it's really important and it's really special for her, then that's actually a very attractive thing. But if she's just there to sort of have an orgasm, that's kind of gross. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's just crazy well, to me. A- I think feeling has a lot to do with it. But Wait, I feeling? Yeah, yeah, like the the passion you put into it, like a meeting with no, someone. No, she could even be a little nervous or shy. She could. She- that's gonna be bad. No, but I disagree. If that's the not first at all. Time, then- that's not. That's not the case. Not the case at all. If she's nervous and shy, and it means a lot to her. Then that's attractive because you know she hasn't given it out to a bunch of different guys. Is it like a kind of like a, a holy grail for you, kind of? Let's kind of think about it like a golden ticket, you know. You don't All want to right. Give, yeah, give, yeah. Giving the golden ticket away to everyone, and if it, if it means a lot to her, that, that's a very attractive thing. And if she's passionate enough about you, that and it, if it, if it's a big deal for her, it's a good thing. It if also, it's just nothing yeah. for her, that's that's really unattractive. Being special has nothing to do with sex. I see that very separately. Yes, it does. Yeah, I think that's a clash here. Well, do, me, think, do you think sex me, like, is, it, is a special sex thing? Is, Having sex, I said it on Dutch television, having sex is the same as going to a theme park for me. You go out, you have fun, and then you go back home. Most guys who are self-respecting would, would look at that and think, oh, you're just completely desensitized to sex, and that's a very unattractive thing, to be desensitized, to desensitized like that. All right, yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from now, more, more than what I did. Like the golden ticket, like, I, yeah, that makes sense. I have a lot to think about when I go home because oh, this shit. whole perspective is crazy to me. So what, what's crazy about it? That that it means so much to you and that you you view it as this thing, <laughs> and I don't. So it's like yeah. it's, it's fascinating because we're fine. human, and I yeah. mean, it's. Don't you think what? people are pair bonded for the longest time, and and generally speaking, around the world, that's the norm: is that people. N- Mo- for the most part, get get married in, when they're virgins, in most cultures around the world. Probably, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So that, that's actually the norm. What we're saying, this is a, an anomaly. Oh, there is Western. no norm. I don't think there is a good or bad. I just like to hear your perspective on mm. it, because I thought that Americans and Europeans were quite like the same, and but yeah, it's wild. Well, I mean, just depends who you speak to, really. But yeah. it's definitely an anomaly in the world how liberal Western culture is with sex. It's very, very taboo and frowned upon in, in most other places in the world. Yeah, I can understand any, that. Any Depends religious the community, it's very frowned upon. Yeah. And most people in the world are religious. All the Muslims, all the Christians. Except for the Colombians. They, they, they're, they're religious, but they just throw it around. Yeah. You've been to Colombia, Jake? I have. Huh. Going back <laughs> in a few weeks. Interesting. Nice. Uh, wait, but you were starting to say, but we're people. What do you mean by that? Like, I feel like we're uh, kind of like... Like judging? Is that kind of what No, you I mean, like, we're, we're, like I say, like, we're, we're the same-ish. As in, I can speak English to you and understand what I'm saying. So it's kind of like, mm-hmm. we're, we can understand each other, but we've grown up so differently that we have such different perspectives on something that's like, it's so different, it's the complete opposite. That's just very fascinating. I don't really understand. Um, it's like agree to disagree kind of thing. <laughs> but I mean, like, just because we speak the same language, I mean, even in, I mean, for example, politics, right? Even in the Netherlands, there's cons- more conservative politicians. There's super liberal politicians, but they speak the same language. So I'm just, I'm not, I'm a little confused by the. Well, we speak the same language, thus we must have yeah, yeah. identical... Yeah, don't read too much into it. What I'm trying oh, to say okay. is we're just kind of... We're, we're the same, we're vibing. Um, most we of are. us are... Yeah, okay. it's nice, and we yeah, get to nice. meet each other. It's been a good so combo. it's like there's a lot of the same things, and we view the world in a lot of the same ways. Uh-huh. And I thought we were kind of grown up in the same ways. And now it turns out that there's a few things that are completely opposite. So that's... So this is a, just a completely alien perspective to you that people should be more conservative I mean I only heard life. it on the podcast uh, you've never heard that before that's not something that was familiar to you at all that people live only that on way. TV yeah Very interesting hmm. do you think that it's a positive thing when people pair bond and when people have families 
When people what? Pair bond. When people like have have families and they and they they get together and they have long relationships and marriages and families. I think it's important. Positive thing. A positive thing. Yeah, I guess so. If that's what you want to do in life. But what do you think would happen if everyone stopped doing that? We kind of screwed, but also times change. So who knows if that will ever but, happen? But if just hypothetically, if that happened tomorrow and everyone stopped pair bonding and everyone stopped being, then the males and females stopped being attracted to each other or and just went away. Or on, on the flip side, if everyone was just having sex and and not being in relationships, not having families, not having kids, what do you think would happen to society? Well, it shouldn't be the one extreme or the other extreme. But the hypothetically, in, I mean, within the hypothetical, what do you think would happen? We would be effed. <laughs> So then, with that in mind, and when you think about what makes a healthy society, which is um, nuclear both. family... You need both. You, wh why do you need promiscuity? Because you need something of everything. Why? Why do you need that? There's people who want to stay single and just... I know people uh, want to, but why do you need it? When we're talking about... M m this is more of a conversation about duties and about what makes a healthy society rather than what we want, what our desires are. Why do you need promiscuity in a society? Because you need something out of everything. Why? People are different. Why do you need it? Not everyone matches together. I know, but just is there a reason why? Because I gave you my reason why we need family, because because that makes a healthy society, healthy communities. Yeah. We need to maintain our birth rate. We need to proliferate as a species. Why do we need promiscuity? Because we're human, and we've been doing this for the, since the beginning of time, and it would be bad if that would not be a thing anymore. Do you think it would be bad if people got together young and they pair bonded and they had kids and families and they weren't sleeping around and there were no STDs and there were no abortions and there were no single mothers and criminals coming from single mother households and people on welfare do you think that it would be bad if those things were taken it's, away it's two extremes i do think you need like a healthy mix of the both of them to make things work yeah it's just funny because you can't really give a reason why though because you're just saying just we need it because we need it without much of a, a reason yeah because people are different if everyone was was the same and wanted the same thing that would not really be a good thing but yeah, I think you're more, but you're more talking about what Sorry. what we want. So people want to have lots of sex, and there are people that have want to have lots of sex, and I think most men out there want to have a lot of sex. But what we want and what we need are two different things. We need a, a stable society in order to move forward, in order to yeah, have we future also generations. Need people who think and act differently. I would say that it's you good if, go if everyone is. The one and if not the there other. are many different aspects of life, for example people's creativity. We need creative people and we need more orderly people, more structured people. That sort of that is a, a positive way that we can have diversity in the world. But in terms of this, it's very easy to see the fruits of a society that is very promiscuous when they have very low birth rates and when they have high rates of disease and single mothers and That's not the products the of case. single mothers. This, these are extremes what you're saying right now. But these this happens. This happens. It happens right here in America. You look at the African American community, for example. Seventy-five percent of kids are born out of um, out of wedlock and are in single mother households. And then, okay, if you look at the statistics of kids who go to single mother households, they're twenty times more likely to end up being criminals, much more likely to end up being on drugs because they don't have a father in the home. It, it, this is all borne out by by statistics. So I can't this is talk why about this side of the world. I don't know how what if I, what if I, here, but what if I, I think in Europe I can say that this works pretty well for us. So and I can't see it. Like what what works? Well? If you want to say it, like vulgar, vulgarly, is the promiscuous. It works thing. well in Europe. Yeah, <laughs> it's super. Uh, it's, it's actually really nice because it makes dating so much easier. Everyone's more relaxed, open-minded. Yeah. Wait, it drama. makes it easier. Yeah. There's a lot of cultural decadence in Europe for sure. Um, you guys have a, a, a birth rate in countries like Holland that's falling off a cliff. You guys are going to be replaced because you're not pair bonding over there. Probably, but times are changing. There's nothing no, bad about it. No, actually, times are changing. It. It's going in a really bad direction. Like the, the native population of Holland in 100, 200 years will be replaced by Muslims. And why is that a problem? Well, don't you have any national identity? Don't you have any pride in, in, in who you guys are? Well, I can only speak for myself, and I don't. I think uh, that a lot of countries change, a lot of cultures change. So it, you, if it happens because of certain things that we do, then it happens. So you'd be you'd be happy for Dutch people to just fade out of existence? No, of course not. <laughs> but what if what if it happened though? What if the Dutch people disappeared? I would yeah. be very sad. <laughs> well, well, that yes. kind of contradicts a little bit what you said before. Let me ask you a question related it to what you said. It won't be in my saying. lifetime. Do you think so? Like Japan is, although this might be changing. Japan is a country that's pretty well known for uh, homogeneity. 
Yeah, homogeneity. And they don't want a lot of uh, immigration, I believe, although maybe it's changing well, it's, it's, a little it's bit. It's changing a little bit because their birth rates are so low. It's actually below yeah. below one now. In but these places. I guess my question for you is, would you think that there is anything wrong if Japanese people wanted Japan to remain Japanese? Like me and Jake, we could move to Japan. We can never become Japanese, right? Yeah. So, but do you think there's anything wrong with a country saying, hey, we want our country to remain our, is it race or ethnicity, or I don't know the specific terminology. Uh, me personally, I can't, I can't actually think of an, any argument that in terms of objecting to Japan wishing to stay Japanese. Sure. Do you think that's wrong, though? No, I honestly do not care about it. I don't have a say in it, so it is what it is. Jake. You can't force a love of nation onto a woman. Women have a biological imperative to breed with stronger men. European men are weak cooks. She would enjoy being forced to wear the burqa. I think that a lot of European men are weak cucks. I think that's, that's very true. And that's the thing. It's so wild because I think if, if you would ask Europeans, they would say the same thing about you. And, and that's I think it's really bad. I think... There has to be some type of understanding, but it's, it's so far apart. I don't think we'll ever. Really I think, but I think that if other. you want to have a like a, a coherent worldview about that, and you, when you want to think about the bigger picture and what's best, you have to be able to explain why you think what you think, and why why it's okay, and why it's okay to just go with what we want and what we desire and what makes us feel nice all the time. Do you know what I mean? And I think that I don't explain it right. No, I think you don't. You just don't really know why you believe that. I think it just feels nice. That's basically what you say. It feels good. It doesn't feel good. We need, we, we need to mix. You can't have one without the other. That's, Why not, that's though? My you, haven't made a, you haven't made a... Because it doesn't work. What doesn't work? What doesn't work? Do you think that society didn't, didn't function well when people were creating families from, and getting, yeah, getting and married Yeah, there will be young? people creating families, but there will also be single people that look for other single people. But you're, but you're saying that it won't work. You have to justify that claim. Why, why won't it work? I, I don't know how else to explain it than um, that there has to be a mix. Wait, a mix of what? Promiscuity and, and like family structure. Yeah, different people with different views. Oh, I thought you meant mix in terms of culture. No, no, no. That's, Groups of people. No, no, no. That's shit. Well, we got to that because I said that their birth rate is falling off a cliff right. with the native um, Dutch people, uh-huh. and they're actually going to get replaced in, in a few hundred years. And your, your country will be Muslim eventually. And she was like, oh, I don't really see the problem with that. And that's where you came in with Japan. Mm, so, okay. But that was a kind of meta conversation. Hmm. But, yeah, I just, I just don't really... See, like, this is a very new thing, all of this cultural decadence that we're experiencing in the West at the moment, where people are just very liberal about it. Oh, we can do what we want. We can just have all of this sex and we can not, not pair bond. And we're seeing the fruits of that, and it's not good. When it's not good at all. The, the birth rates are literally falling off a cliff. And, it's a, and that's a big problem. And women are getting older and older and they're not marrying and they're pretty becoming depressed about it. Like in America, and I think throughout the Western world as well, the, the amount of antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications that women are taking is, is obscene. And but that doesn't have to do anything it with It actually does because you can correlate it. You can correlate women who are single and childless in their 40s with antidepressants. What's the rate for men? Much lower than women. Mm. What yeah. are the statistics? I can't. I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm sure we could look it up. Mm. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think that uh, generally speaking, a man can go his whole life just focusing on a career and be reasonably satisfied. It's not optimal, obviously, but if a woman does that, I think that it's 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 a pretty it's a recipe for a disaster. Just the way that we're biologically biologically wired. Only 40% of men that have ever lived have reproduced. How is promiscuity needed? What's well, that's kind of how we started the, the no, conversation. But, yeah, but what, okay, so what purpose does it serve? Um, what purpose does it serve? So people can just be their own, and if they want to be more uh, vulgar, then they can. So Not everybody can, wants to marry and be, get locked down. can just be sort of at the whim of their desire. They can do what feels nice. How do you mean? That people can just follow their desires, they can just do what feels good. And if, if that's a priority for them, yeah. Do you think that that's a positive thing, though, to always be attached to your desire rather than your duties and responsibilities? 
um, if it's not me, but I think for a lot of people, if that's what they want to do and that's what makes them happy and not hurting anyone else, is great. But what if you are hurting other people? What if, what if the society as a whole, like the bigger picture that I just painted, well, is affected by all of this? Not all women decadence. want to be breeding machines and get married, you know? What do you mean by a breeding machine? Like they don't want to reproduce. Well, what, what, makes, what makes them a breeding machine if they reproduce? It's the primary function of a woman. Yeah, well, you don't have to. I'm not saying that you have to. I mean, you, can, you can unfortunately not do that if you'd really like to, but it doesn't make you a breeding machine. It just makes you a mother. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It is, yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't call a woman who has children a breeding machine. No, it's fair. Yeah, yeah. maybe I, I worded it differently. Yeah, but I think it's kind of a sub subconscious thing that comes out sometimes because this is the messaging that young women are fed these days is that if you actually view motherhood and being a wife and having a family as, as something that's aspirational in itself, then you're subjecting yourself to a lower form of purpose. But I, I don't see that at all. If you have children, and if you're, you're a woman who has children, three, four, five children, and you send them out into the world and they're good people, it's like the ultimate responsibility. It's difficult to raise good kids, you know? And what if you don't want to have kids then? Like, how is that in your perspective? I'd say that it's, it's a selfish thing to do. I think that we have duties as, as people. One of those duties is to replace, to replace our lineage. It's a selfish, materialistic thing to, to do. Do you really think that it's, it's bad if you don't want to reproduce? 100%. Yeah, you have, you, have, you have duties. It's not all about what feels nice in life. Okay, yeah. yeah, interesting. Like, like for example, your country is a perfect example. You, you guys are getting replaced. And if you guys don't have some white babies... What the fuck? <laughs> then you're going to be replaced. Uh, there, there are quite a lot of people in the Netherlands who do have families and go for all of that. But it's going like this, though. You, like, if, if you have mass immigration of people from the Middle East and Africa, which is happening in, in Netherlands at the moment, and they all breed at a much higher rate than you, three, four kids per woman, and the Netherlands has a birth rate of like 1.2, then what's going to happen is that you're eventually going to be replaced and, and the Dutch people aren't going to exist anymore. It's going to be an, no, an, like an, off, an offshoot of the Middle East. Doesn't that, doesn't that concern you at all? No. There's a lot of countries who won't exist anymore in yeah. thousands of years. We I won't think, exist anymore but Christian, in thousands but of years. Like, country like Holland, it's like one of, the, one, of the, one of the best countries in the world. You guys have the best farmers in the world. One of the most... So, like, the ingenuity in Holland is, is amazing. You guys build those dikes to keep the water out. Like, you guys are one of the most productive farmers in the whole world. That's not going to remain, especially if your government keeps trying to restrict the farmers. But... Don't you think that's a problem? Don't you think Holland is good? You actually, Dutch people should stay around? Yeah, Dutch people are awesome. I think, yeah, from my perspective, being around Dutch people are awesome. But still, uh, I stand by what I just said, that I think that lots of different people with different views are still needed. And if that eventually leads to uh, one country dying out, I mean, it's going to happen eventually anyway. But then again, I'm a nihilist, so... Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. You're going uh, okay. to go out, go out with a whimper. <laughs> nihilist. Yeah. Lol Paladins donated $200.02. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate and it. And there it is. You think the Nazis lost? Nope. Here she is right in the studio. A woman who would be happy if humans stopped existing. Should we just go march into the gas chambers to speed it up? Thank you, Law Paladins. Damn, your, that's your, extreme. <laughs> uh, your response? My, my response, uh, I love Paladins. <laughs> but also, that's, that's very extreme. Like, that's not at all what I meant to say. And if it comes across mm. like he's, that, no, then he's that's being, really bad. He's being facetious, but he's making a good point, which was just to say that why don't we just march ourselves into the gas chambers already? What's the point? I mean, but, I mean you did say that you're a, you're a nihilist. Um, but, yeah, it's... It, probably in accordance with your, with your way of thinking. Why don't we just die? But as I'd like to actually have that answered. Why don't we just die? Because we don't. I mean, it's a bit common sense. That's not what I was trying to say, right? Yeah, but we like, all make the best of it. And some people want to have families, and they want to have 10 kids, fine. Some people don't. They just want to sleep with everyone, which is also fine. I think we should respect both parties. And if eventually mm. that leads to uh, pro problems in a country, like we deal with it then. Humans have always adjusted to any situation that's how we sit here right now. But, so, But it's, do we have to respect them? Respect who? What, uh, Jake, maybe you know this term, something about tolerance. Uh, if you tolerate everything... You stand, you stand, if you tolerate everything, you stand for nothing. I think there's some specific term for it. I can't, maybe the chat will know. Chat, something about like the, 
intolerance of tolerance or the tolerating toler I don't know exactly what it is. It's not clear to me though if everyone's deserving of respect and certain conduct. Like I think most like do you think hookup culture is good? Do I think hookup culture is good? Yes. A hookup culture as in people Hook just sleeping around. Yeah, there. so essentially promiscuity. Is it good? Is it good? I mean, for the teenagers, I guess. It, well, I don't even know if it's good for the teenagers. There's a difference between should people be allowed to do something and is it good? It doesn't have to be good or bad. I think everyone should make the decision for themselves. So, like, as a society, right, I can't imagine the United States is ever going to, for example, criminalize having a casual sexual encounter. But as a society, we can still say this is undesirable conduct. We should try to move away from it. We shouldn't do it. And there should be social shame. So you said these people still deserve respect. Do they, though? Because if we're not going to criminalize something, the only way that we can enforce, like, certain social values is through social shame. It's shameful to conduct yourself this way. So it's not deserving of respect. If you're, if you're a person, whether male or female, and you go out and you sleep with 10 new people a month, uh, I think that this is worthy of social shame. So it comes from a point of or to keeping something safe. What do you from mean, your, keeping like, something safe? Yeah, you're trying to keep... Preserve something. Yeah, maybe that's the right word to say it. Well, you said respect. Yeah. I don't think you, nobody's owed, like respect is earned, right? So this idea that we need to respect people and their beliefs, I kind of disagree. That's I don't think so they're, they, I think they're you should owed respect, respect. everyone. No, I don't think you should respect everyone. I think you should, yeah. uh, you should comport yourself in a, yourself in a respectable manner. Uh, and it doesn't mean you need to necessarily insult somebody, but this idea that we need to respect all beliefs I think is, uh, is erroneous. I think we should, there should be, in, in instances where there's, n there's no conceivable way that a law can be passed to police people's conduct, there needs to be sh social and societal and cultural shame that exists to uh, prevent undesirable conduct in a society. Yeah, and it makes, it makes a lot of sense with where you're coming from. It's very doable as well because we've done the reverse. What was since since feminism has really come into the into the frame in Western society, there's been a mass propaganda campaign to indoctrinate young women into this liberal way of thinking, and the reverse is actually possible as well. It just matters. It just matters about what kind of propaganda is put out there. So it's very doable. Interesting. All right. I'm just glad I don't live here. I'm very happy. Well, I mean, there, it's degenerate in the United States, too. Yeah. I would do really bad here. I actually think the United States is more degenerate than... Oh, I don't know about where they're from. The it's Netherlands? I, I've been to the Netherlands three times. I mean, I feel like in Europe, obviously each country is different. I actually think in Europe, promiscuity is not nearly as bad as it is in the United States. I, I think that Europe in general, it's not, but you're, then you're, you're taking into account Eastern Europe and places like Russia and Ukraine and Hungary and more mm -hmm. traditional, and then you're also taking into account Turkey, which is a bit more traditional as well. But where they're from in Western Europe, it's like very, very degenerate. Places like Germany, have you ever heard of the Bergheim? I think what's, it's what's love that? Bergheim. Exactly. It's a lot more <laughs> less black and white, I, uh, a lot more yeah. nuanced, I think, because I am together with my boyfriend for four years and we're thinking about next steps and we have a lot of friends well, around well, us getting children and growing their families. So that's also in the Netherlands. Well, and then there's also a very free scene. Sorry. No, I, well, I just I know you're giving your own an anecdotal experience. I don't think Jake, Jake is certainly not saying all the women in these countries or all the people in these countries, they're all degenerate. Um, obviously, there's people that conduct themselves in a different way. But, I, I mean, to we Jake's point, very liberal, yeah. I, even the Western European countries, I don't think they're as degen and as promiscuous as American women. I don't, I don't know. I think that. American women are probably the... I'm trying to think... No, nah, UK is the worst. Yeah, England. England? The UK is the worst. Uh, UK is the worst, and then I'd say probably... Countries like Germany and, and Netherlands I are think, pretty bad, but I think yeah, German yeah. women are pretty like you compare a German woman to an American woman. The only reason I say that though is because America is still a very Christian country, and in in the, like the the more rural places, you do get 
like these places are very Christian. When you get to the cities, like at Los Angeles and New York and and Miami and places like this, they're some of the, they're probably the most degenerate places in the world. Oh, America still has oh. that Christian core, which I think is like holding the ship up. Is it the majority though? I feel like yeah, I the, the lib a- agnostic atheist is the majority now in the United States. But I mean, I think uh, it, like you look at your average German woman versus your average American woman. I'm pretty sure the average American woman is more promiscuous than the average German woman. Dude, if you go to Berlin, honestly, it's it's terrible. I, I feel like European women, and that's obviously very broad in general, seem to conduct themselves a bit more uprightly than Amer- their American counterparts. I think they're more England, they're, they're smarter. I don't they're know about smarter. England. I'll I'm you're probably right about England. They're probably slags or whatever they call them. But uh May you go out for a night out in Liverpool or Manchester? Oh, England's horrendous. fucked. But like yeah. continental Europe, I've, I'm pretty sure like continental European women. Hmm, Scandinavia is kind of fucked. Hold on, let me think about it's, this. It, look, it's, it's very Why feminist over there. Why are you so there. negative about, about what? that people are a bit more free? It's kind of Free? Be- are you free or are you slave? What? what? Oh, that was some, no, deep, think, that was some <laughs> fucking fifth grade <laughs> like tweet, fucking Jaden Smith tweet <laughs> shit. Oh, but it's like perfect question. But it's it's. I think it's nice that people are free to to experience. You mean and you mean a slave to your base primal animal urges? It depends what you mean by free, though. Well, there's less shame if you want to experiment or go to Bergenheim. I've, I've never okay. been, but I've heard stories. Just for those who don't know, the Bergheim is this uh, club in Berlin where people go and you're not allowed to have your phones on you or anything like that. And everyone's dressed up really freaky and they're all having sex in the different rooms. And there's a guy who's famous for getting his mouth peed in there. What the he's what? like, he hangs out. I've never been here, by the way. What? He hangs out in the toilet and he puts his face <laughs> under and people pee in his mouth. This is a real guy. Like, um, and this is what they do. And But this is the logical conclusion of being free, of people ex- being able to explore whatever they want to do. You end up... <laughs> but it's one guy, you said, yeah. one guy. Once you, you go for a relationship, then you can have the commitment that you want. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of a risk, isn't it? Because if you go until you're sort of late 20s, early 30s, and you just do what you want, you're free, you're much less likely to, to pair bond when you're in your 30s. And you're much less likely to have kids as well. And if you do have kids after 35 or whatever, they're much more likely to have conditions as well. So... There's a lot of risk involved. So you can say that it's good and it might be fun. I'll be the first to admit that it can be fun. But is it, is it right? Is it what's best for society? That's the question. For people to be free. And also, what is freedom? What does that even mean? And do you think that people actually want to be free? Well, I don't know. I was just listening to to the whole story, and I think it's uh, you. You were talking about shaming people and yeah. body counts and stuff like that. And personally, I I think of course it matters. I I don't think I would date a guy that has a body count over a hundred or fifty. Um, but if other people don't have a problem with them, that why would you shame them for it? Like we we have to look at ourselves and what we want. And if I want someone with a low body count, then I look for someone with a low body count. And if she enjoys life and and has a high body count and doesn't see a problem, then why would we shame her for that? Well, because we have to live in the same society as people. And we have to create a societal standard. And it does affect us. People are different. I understand that. But I think that people are also reasonably malleable in the way that we, we conduct ourselves. For example, in America, they've got this big thing where you have these transgender people who are reading kids' stories in school. And there's all this indoctrination into this sexual ideology happening in schools in America. That's the logical conclusion of freedom. Because if you believe in freedom over anything, then why is that wrong? You can't really make a case for why that's wrong. But if you believe in that that's something that should be... Do you believe that that's something that should be stigmatised and shamed? There should be a rule set in place for that. Yeah. Why? I think personally. But why? Because uh, <laughs> you shouldn't mix children with certain things. Why not? Well, there's many reasons why you shouldn't do that. It's not good for their brains, first of all. But you're a nihilist, though, so like, why? Do- <laughs> 
get, no, I'm not going to get deep, thinking, deep into the yeah, philosophy with you. Just thinking about the future. I mean, the, the kids are they are the future, right? So you can't brainwash them from a young age. But that's a whole different topic. Like, I don't really know what the deal is. Like, I've what seen if they it want on to? TV. What if they want to read it? What if the, the storyteller wants to read it? What if the kids want to read it? The kids want to read it. Uh, I think think they should ask their parents first. Yeah. And what if their parents say, that's fine, you can go read that book about oral sex, my 11-year-old? Is it, should, should that be okay? No, it should be like maybe 14 or something. So then you're saying at least there should be some sort of shame and stigma attached to, se the, to sexuality. Some rules set right. in place, especially when it comes to children. Yeah. Do you think they that maybe be that's because we don't want the next generation of children who are going to go out into the workforce and going to have families, etc., because we don't want them to be degenerates? Well, you call it degenerate. It sounds so negative. I just view it as people with different priorities, standpoints, lifestyles. Do you think there, there's no good or, or bad in that. Do you think that. that it's bad to be a serial killer? Well, that's common sense. Why? Because you you're hurting no good other or bad. people. But you said there's no good or bad. Well, you're hurting other people, so do obviously you, do there's you think it's, okay. exceptions. But don't you think that if you're one of these people who's reading books to kids, you're also hurting other people? No, that depends, because then it's uh, about the, the parents and the child, right? So what they decide to do is best, then they should follow that. But what if it hurts the child? Well, I hope it won't hurt the child. I don't know what they're doing, but reading a book what to a child... What if you, could, quant you could quantify it pretty easily and say that children shouldn't be exposed to overly sexual material, and that it does hurt children? No, well, it depends on how young they are. I mean... Do they do get like such education here in America as well, right? But this kind, this is not sexual education. This is like sexual indoctrination of kids, and it's happening on a on a pretty broad scale over here. But I think we're, to get to get to the meat and potatoes of it, it's to say that some things should be shamed in society, and it just matters where you draw that line. And what we're saying is that the line should be drawn way before where it is at the moment. And what you're saying is that people should be able to free, be free to do whatever yeah, they want. Yeah, our lines are way off. But what you're saying 100%. is that is that you don't, if, if, if I'm not hurting anybody else, but you are hurting other people because you have to live in the same society as people. And then my kids have to go to the same kids as, the same school as your kids. And I have to see you guys around. And then my kids have to watch these gay pride parades happening in the middle of the street with these naked men with their penises out dancing in front of them. That affects me. And that's the consequence of liberalism and, and of this freedom that you guys talk about. And perhaps you haven't thought about the logical conclusion of it because in, in your life you don't do anything I mean, only fans, it's pretty heinous, but, you know, perhaps you haven't thought about the logical conclusion of it, but, but it does affect other people who you live in the society with. I would disagree, um, <coughs> because, like, Amsterdam is obviously known for the most amazing gay pride, and uh, we bring children there, but it's a different type of Wait, introduction. Revise. Yeah, but this is kind of something, I mean, the whole crying thing, like, this is something that is kind of policed by women. You don't like weak men. Crying is not weak. Yeah, it is. Crying is not weak. I have if, if men cried in the same ways that women cry, you would think it's weak. I fully disagree. What about if they cry because they stub their toe? <laughs> would that be weak? Then they have a low pain tolerance, unless it's really bad. Do you bad. think that would be a hint of weakness about that? If it's about if if it's measured on their pain level, then yeah, but that doesn't say anything about them as a person at what all. What about because so someone called them fat? Someone called <laughs> if them someone fat. Someone called them fat and they started crying. Well, that's that's awful. That's really sad. So you think that if just a an off comment, you're walking with your boyfriend down the street and someone says, "But doesn't make, make hey, him fatty, weak," and then he starts. Crying about Maybe it. he has trauma or something. Doesn't make him a weak man. Like if a if a man dares to cry in front of me, that makes me feel more like honored. Like, oh, you dare to, you trust me, you you dare to cry in front of me, and I'll take care of you. So, yeah. I think women will generally say this, but it's for the most part a lie. Um, they're actually pretty grossed out when guys cry, especially for for trivial reasons as well. And, and wouldn't you want that to change? No. You don't what? have a feeling like, do you cry? No. Never. That's bad. You I don't think it is. Well, I think I while. think you guys think about it from the female paradigm, which is that you cry a lot because you guys are more emotional beings. I can't. I couldn't cry if I tried. You know, sometimes 
shit happens that's really horrible and I'm like there's not there's not even one little bit of me that wants to cry right now you know but it's just but I think it's just the kind of the way that holding in your emotion like it's not, okay not really. to be vulnerable in I'll go I'll situation. go smash the boxing bag for an hour and I'll feel good after it I think we just we just operate differently and generally if I see a guy who cries a lot it suggests to me that he has a lack of emotional control and that would that would echo in other parts of his personality and his character as well so okay uh, then maybe I, I put that as one of the things I thought there would be nice to have more room for men, but maybe that's completely my own mind and mm. that's not a need at all. Yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of guys just don't really like crying. You know, it's not really just, it's just not really something we do as much. You, you guys can cry on it's a dime. It's a human emotion. Of course men cry as well. I think they don't because I feel like they can't. I don't, I don't really think that's true. I've got a lot for of, you, ma- maybe I've got a lot of male friends and, it's very rare that they cry. If they did, you know, that's fine. I think if you're around your, your male friends, it's, it's okay to shed a tear sometimes. But I just don't really think it's something we do as much. Generally, we tend to have, like, more logical, practical conversations. If I, was, if I had a real disagreement with a guy and he just started crying, I'd be a bit like, okay, like, can we stop the tears and can we just have a, have a conversation about it? Because we're not really solving anything by you just sitting there sobbing, you know? So. Well, you let out your emotion. It's good to let it go sometimes. Yeah, well, that's, and that, that's for saying. every single like, human being. Of course, maybe you don't have it. Some people have it more than others. But I, I think it's a bad thing to say that men shouldn't do it because it's weak. But we have other ways of channeling out our emotion, though. And I think that uh, crying is just not really necessarily one of them. If you go to the gym, go for a run, go and have a, have a, have a logical, practical conversation with somebody. You know, if I've got a real problem and it's really eating away at me, I'm not going to cry because then the problem's still there. I'm going to go and call up, call up one of my brothers or one of my best friends. And, you do that and after crying, usually. First you let your emotion go, and then you grab yourself together mm-hmm. and brainstorm, okay, what can we do about this? It seems it's not like, like we have a waste of time crying. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe for you. I think, yeah. I don't know. It's just like a, a way to release the emotion. Like it doesn't have to. Like when you feel really intensely sad or like mad about something, it's just a way of releasing emotion. It doesn't make you more weak. Because, like, you'd say, I mean, like, their way of releasing that is by hitting things or, like, with anger. And I don't think that's better or worse. It's just, like, people, you know, the way they let out emotion is different. So I don't view it as weak. It's just, like, but you know. Do you think I'd rather have them cry it, it, than to, like, hold it inside and feel, like, that intense no, pain. That's you know a man, I mean? that's some man shit. You fucking stifle that shit, push it down. Yeah, you push it down. <laughs> fucking push that yeah, shit no, down. I don't, I don't believe in that. Like, <laughs> you should be able to be emotional. Like, no, well, even if I grant that, like, look, if you're if you're a guy and you're gonna cry, don't do that shit in front of your chick. That's for sure. Yes, you should definitely. She's the Fuck. one who's supposed to take definitely. care of she's you. What? When, she's the one who's supposed to be there for you and take care of you in times yeah, when you're right. you are doing that. She's supposed to be there and take care of you. But and if she's the right one, she will. But what women say and how they act are sometimes very different. So mm. you'll see your guy cry in front of you. And like, even if it doesn't register in your brain, somewhere back there, <laughs> you're going to be like, this guy's a fucking bitch. Yep. You're gonna, I know, but I feel you're like men lose feel attraction. Because he just if said a girl that cry, it is what do you bitchy. Mean? Basically, he implied that. So I feel like it's more of a society thing. No, it's, no, a, it's a woman like thing. No, I think it's, it's a woman's kind of ingrained. But like, who raised if, the if women? If I were to, though? if I were to, we like, grew up in a society that ingrains ideas in our head. So then we're gonna just, you know, subconsciously react in a Wait, certain Jake, way. Wait, Jake, can I ask you a question? Yes. And then if, he just said that it's not okay. Cried in front of you, but it was like. I'm trying to. Hmm, I don't know if this is going to be a perfect example. Like, if one of your your male friends cried, like, would you console him? Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't. It would. It wouldn't be like a. Oh, like, are you okay? That sort of thing. You just sit there with them. Yeah. And then you come to a logical, practical solution about it. Yeah, of course. You, I'd, I'd sit there in the moment. And that's happened to me before, where I've had guy friends of mine who have, you know, confided in me and, and ended up crying. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. But I'm not gonna sit there and start crying with you we're gonna yeah like you don't need to baby someone but you can definitely i think that women do that though and that's different like one of you starts crying and everyone starts crying and then i don't baby people when they cry you just want to be sort of heard as as a Mm -hmm. guy it's different women tend to want let's say if your girl cries in front of you the last thing that i'm going to do is be like okay cool like let's get a practical solution going (laughs) you know i'm just going to be like yeah okay cool yeah okay wow that's so sad and let's sit there yeah so just support them you can say that on both sides that's a tragedy um but with, if a guy cries in front of me, generally it's going to be like, all right, let's, let's try and let's get this out the way and then let's try and fix this problem. 
That's two different things. But also, guys are meant to be the protectors. And generally, if you cry, it means that you can't handle a situation. And it, it reduces you to tears. It reduces you to this level of emotion. And I think there's something in women that says if they see a guy crying over a problem, then he can't handle tough situations. And then when it comes to that moment where he needs to step up, he might, he might crumble. He might collapse. Mm -hmm. So... I don't think it's a, an attractive thing to do. I feel like it's more situational. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, the, if, if he's guy, crying at well, everything, like, if okay. A, if a family member dies and then he's, like, overcome with emotion, then that's fair enough, obviously, if something so tragic happens. But if it's every over all these little things, then it's just kind of just bitchy, if I'm well, honest. Well, it's just a lack of, like, emotional stability if they cry at everything. 